Greetings, everyone, and welcome back to Clan Folk. On the third of winter, we are rapidly making progress towards Widminter. At um, Widminter, Midwinter at the moment. Ah, it's been a long day. It's only just begun, which is kind of terrifying. Uh, right, Bentham is currently uh, just enjoying a, a spot of cleaning around the house. Now, it has been mentioned in the comments that this doesn't actually matter to people; that it matters to me. But I do believe that you will find that the room's environment goes down based on there being dirt on the ground. We'll have a look at that, though, just to confirm. Uh, certainly in this room, it's probably not going to make that much of a difference because so much of the room is just open ground anyway. But uh, it, would, it is a, a useful thing for us to double check because I'm definitely running under the assumption that a filthy floor negatively impacts the environment score of the room and that can in turn play into their mood. Now, presently, let's have a look at what people are up to. Amira just did a bunch of gathering. We've still got a couple of gathering spots down there right now. Let's have a look at the amount of gathering jobs there are. There are 14 gathering jobs remaining. There are a bunch of harvesting jobs, quite a lot of those, actually. Uh, we have done a little bit of stuff off camera. Namely, I noticed a comment pointing out that uh, I had not actually set up this eel trap to repeat its orders. I have now done that. Not that it's going to help because uh, it's going to take some time. Uh, still, this is uh, okay for now. There we go. It'll be ready come the the spring when everything thaws out and we can use the eel traps again. Continuing to make plenty of pots where we can and bring in ice as, uh, as we're able. We do need to get more of these pallets filled up because if we want this room to be able to remain frozen all the way through to win uh, the next winter then we're going to need about three pallets full of ice jugs. That's a full 100 uh, ice jugs. Because the ice jugs, they have their, their units, their, their quantity, much the same as water jugs. Now, what are you up to, Kara? You are currently off to hunt, or you were. You were a bit too cold. Now you're heading inside. Uh, okay, I would very much like this to be brought in as a very, very high priority. We can't leave meat like that just out there. Uh, you can come on in, warm up a little bit. Yeah, this is the problem. Your Kyra is currently actively just trying to warm up because it is so bitterly cold outside. Getting some more clothing would really help with that. Uh, but right, well, actually, Amira, I'm going to pop your gathering down below making clothing just to see if we can get this done a little bit sooner. It might be something that we can get get done. It might not be. We'll see. Uh, at the very least, as well, long as we've got both of these fires going, then these rooms should be able to maintain their temperature. And in turn, that will also help out our little barn there as well. The animals will need uh, a decent amount of heat to get through the winter, but thankfully sheep are, well, naturally resistant to the, the most biting, uh, bitter cold of winter. Chickens, on the other hand, would tend very, very poorly, or rather tend to handle the, uh, the cold very poorly. We have enough food for 36 days. That's not bad, considering where we're at. But no one has actually gone for the tinkering bench, which is a little bit of a, a pain. But Amira, thank you very much for bringing in that stag corpse. Now, obviously outside at minus 17 degrees celsius we don't really need to worry about the stag corpse decaying now how are our uh tiles going in here yeah they're going all right we've got plenty of drink there and as long as these rooms don't get too cold throughout the night then we shouldn't have to worry about refilling this water bowl however if this should ever get close enough to freezing instead of the water bowl freezing and then thawing once it warms up the water is just gone. It deletes the water once this, uh, once it freezes inside the water bowl. But you can see the water, the temperature is dropping. We're at 12 degrees right now. People have topped up the fires. And let's just see if these fires can make it all the way through. We've got six of ten branches there. We've got nine of ten branches here. And how many branches overall do we still have? Oh, uh, we've got quite a few actually. So we shouldn't struggle too much. I need to uh, put 16 in here to get all of the. Uh, raw hide, or rather the uh, dry hide, onto the hide shelf, and that in turn will allow Amira then to work on the clothes zone a little bit better. And that is definitely something we need to get to. They are now all adults, so uh, they should have roughly the same 
skill with the flute, so we shouldn't hear too many discordant notes. But as they transition into seniors and elders, that will get even better over time. Oh, Amira is the one actually doing a bit of uh, tinkering. This is something they can do in their downtime as well, which is actually quite nice. Now that's going to use up a couple of our hay seeds and some wood ash, but we've been producing lots of wood ash and lots of hay seeds for quite some time. So I'm pretty happy with uh, making use of that one. Right, Kyra's heading back out to do some more hunting, or it looked like you were, but uh, no, they you've decided to stop off in order to take care of the fire. Ah, right, the hunting job you're doing is butchering. Marvellous. Okay, so Amir is just going to focus on getting a couple of uh, things done on the tinkering bench, which I'm a-okay with. It does give us a nice little jump in terms of ideas, but uh, in the future, I will probably steer clear of the tinkering bench. I think there are better ways for us to get everything that we're going to need. Now, one of the things I would like to unlock, but it's quite far away, and the, uh, the fact that the tinkering bench isn't quite <clears throat> as capable as I'd hoped, I would have liked to get a uh, tiled peat stove up and running because it can produce so much heat. It can also be used to do a bit of extra cooking jobs as well, but I don't think we're going to be getting there anytime soon. Amira is currently working on cloaks, and as long as Amira continues to work on this, then we should be able to get ourselves some good winter safe clothing as well. Where are you off to right now? Ah, you're doing the last little bit of gathering out here. Okay, well done. We'll get those jobs out of the way and we'll slowly see this job list go down. But as you can see, moving around out, out in the winter is rough work. So getting down there itself is a bit of a, a, bit of a chore. Uh, again, a couple of extra items. Let's actually have a look at what people are wearing at the moment. You've got a sackcloth shirt, tunic, you've got a fur hat, and you've got a sackcloth cloak. Uh, Amira has got uh, sackcloth bottoms, a fur tunic, fur hat, and a fur cloak. By far and away, one of the uh, warmest uh, of the clan folk, I should imagine. And Kyra has a merely a fur, uh, fur tunic and a sackcloth hat, which does explain why Kyra tends to turn back in order to seek heat faster than the other two do. That's something that we're going to need to work on, though uh, I am a little bit concerned that our food is just out and outside right now. Let's see about setting someone up with a higher priority for hauling. In fact, Kyra, for a bit of a break, I'm going to give this to you as a high priority. Could I please get you moving things around inside rather than uh, heading outside? I think that would be ideal. Oh, fantastic. There we go. You have fully donned your clothing. Now, we are actually on the, uh, the uh, new version which has reactivated the new clothing mechanic that I mentioned in the previous episode. It had been dialed back because there was a bit of uh, pathing logic. The clown folk became very indecisive in some edge cases and would just seesaw between deciding to put some clothes on and then taking them off. Uh, so that had to be uh, walked back until the, uh, the break in the logic could be identified and fixed, but that has been fixed. So we are now seeing them wearing clothes with the new clothing logic. So it's going to be very interesting to see how they make use of that. It is probably worth having a uh, stack of clothes near a doorway so that people can drop off their cloak as they come inside if they don't need it for the heat and then put it back on when they're going back outdoors. Uh, we'll see how that all goes together. Ah, there we go. Bentham is having a look at something. Let's have a look at the environment overlay. There we go. Yeah, the dirt on the floor is causing the environment to be very, very uh, unappealing. So minus 15 there, minus 35 here because of the dirt on the floor. So that does actually have an impact. It isn't just visual. So, uh, Bentham, you can continue taking care of that if you would be so kind. Right. For now, though, it looks like uh, our clan folk have quite a lot of jobs to do and not nearly enough time to do them. We've got a first guest of winter, I believe. It is Effie from Clan Boyd. Welcome, Effie. Get yourself inside. <sighs> go go deal with your ablutions and then uh, grab a snack and bed down for the night. It'll be a private room for you, so you should actually be in very, very high spirits. It's also an enormous room, though the room itself is not exactly the nicest looking room as things go, but uh, I should imagine you'll be okay with it. 
There we are. Let's actually have a see of how this is going. Rent dues 24. We'll see if this goes up a little bit more. It's all based on the satisfaction, ultimately. So, huge room by itself and well fed are already doing a good job of rising that. But once you get a private room, I should imagine that is going to change drastically. There we are. Private room there. We did have a little bit of disturbed sleep. But private room by itself is with four a second. That is huge. So, uh, giving your guests private quarters is a good way of rising clan reputation. A very, very good way. And we've, of course, had another lamb. That is amazing. Uh, unfortunately, we have not uh, not got another you. So, uh, we've got a bunch of, of rams here. We will almost certainly be slaughtering or selling some of them come uh, come spring, or once a trader comes around who's interested in them, because having that many uh, that many male sheep is not really effective for us. Right, we no longer need this flammable blocker, so we'll get rid of that one for now. We still need the ones in here, though. Uh, how are we doing over here? Three of three, one of three there, three of three. Uh, there we go. We're doing okay, but we probably need more straw. Yes, yes, we do. Well, the flax stems we can break down into straw. That's not a problem. Can we still get some of the grasses out here? It's possible. There may still be some grasses out there that we can bring in, but uh, it depends a little bit. Uh, they are... St oh, no, they've managed to do all of the gathering tasks, it looks like. Yes, they have. Oh, that's fantastic. All right, well, then let's get the grass cut if you can. I don't think you're actually producing any grass, though. No, that is a shame. Okay. Well, given that, then there's no point in you continuing with that job at all. So you just go ahead and uh, head back indoors. The grasses have all died at this point, sadly. Uh, we got 21 clan, uh, clan reputation from that one. That was not bad at all. Not bad at all. Uh, is there anywhere else that we could gather? Not really, and there's no point in trying to gather up here either. Again, all of these areas are now, unfortunately, useless to us for the sake of gathering grasses. So it's what we've got now that's going to have to carry us through for the rest of winter. On that note, we do have quite a lot of hay, so that isn't the worst thing. But if we're going to butcher one of the one of the sheep in order to make more uh, room for them, uh, make sure that they've got enough food to get through the winter. That is something that we're going to have to take care of relatively soon, if I'm perfectly honest. Um, trying to make more straw is possibly a bit of a problem, since that is going to use the hay. I'm going to reduce this to just try and maintain, let's say, 20 straw. That's one um, one threshings worth of straw because it'll give us 25 that'll be enough to repair the bedding but probably not enough to work on any of the clothes well some of the clothing will be enough to do it but uh, hopefully we won't go we won't go through all of our straw uh hay supplies making clothes which wouldn't really be necessary for us we do need to get some more twine soon though that's definitely something for us to look into uh, as for the mushroom racks, we don't strictly need these, so I could take those down and put them outside, I suppose. Uh, yeah, we might as well. There's no reason to have them inside right now. They're just taking up room, which we could uh, make better use of otherwise. Uh, the wolves are out here killing a hind. You know what? That's fine. We've got 35 days worth of food. I don't need to take it from the wolves, and honestly, if the wolves have food, they will be less interested in our sheep, which I'm, of course... Very, very happy with. Uh, what are you heading up here for? You are heading up for a little bit of stone. Fair enough. But the nice thing right now is that although you are cold, you're not too cold because you've got enough of the uh, fur items on that you can go for quite a journey without having to turn back. That is actually a really, really good place for us to be. But as I said, I'm going to pass a little bit of time now. It is currently midwinter, day five, and I will bring you back when there is something interesting to report. Okay, we've just gone through the coldest night of winter, midwinter 5, and as you can see, the temperature got down to 2 degrees in the barn, and that was reflected pretty much everywhere else, and that was with two fires running constantly. So, if we hadn't have built our second fire, we would almost certainly have seen negative temperatures in these rooms, which would have been quite, quite unfortunate. But we managed to keep the temperature just above freezing the whole night through. 
Uh, unfortunately, our lambs still don't have a repaired bed, so they, one of them still isn't getting to sleep properly. Though they are, they are uh, hot swapping beds, so uh, what we're finding is that whilst care is going down, or at least isn't going up as quickly for one of them, quite often it'll be the case that that one will get a bed the next night. So it's, it's evening out overall. Uh, let's have a look at you. Clan Reputation 27 there. That is amazing. At this point, you might be wondering what is Clan Reputation useful. Well, as you can see, as this fills up, we will gain extra stars. And the stars themselves unlock different uh, trade goods from the traders. It is almost entirely based on trade at the moment. I don't know if there's plans to expand that and actually have any degree of uh, further diplomacy with the with the clans but uh, well actually uh, another thing it does uh, impact is as it increases you get a higher chance of traders or travelers or job seekers coming from that clan so at particularly low levels you might find it harder to actually attract jobbers or traders from a clan but whereas uh, as the reputation increases it becomes uh, much more of a guarantee each day so there is there is a tangible uh, benefit beyond just what they're willing to trade it also uh, impact whether they're willing to trade at all or at least whether their traders decide that your clan is worth visiting but once again i'm going to pass a little bit of time just allow, allow our clan folks to get more of their jobs done we've currently got only a handful of jobs mostly it's mining jobs right now we still have a bunch of lumber jobs just no one has that as a very high priority and for the time being i'm not actually uh, bothered by that since we don't have the kinds of tools that we need to make proper use of the lumber most of the the basics that we're trying to maintain like branches or gravel or, or large rocks you get an automated way uh, and more or less an an, an uh, an exhaustible way of dealing with that later. You can build clay pits, you can build quarries, and you can turn logs into branches, or I, I'd like to imagine it's more firewood at that point than branches. But uh, you can effectively have uh, renewable resources. The, about the only ones that aren't renewable are things like gold, because now we've got the peat bogs, even iron is renewable, it just takes a very long time to regenerate. But with that, let's uh, pass a little bit more time, shall we? Overnight, we saw the wolves creep a little bit too close to our livestock. And as you can see right now, I've actually switched over Orestes to livestock guard mode. So that is all Orestes is, is, cares about right now, is making sure that our livestock are uh, uh, protected. And Orestes did not get much sleep last night as a consequence of the wolf being so close by. He's constantly going out and chasing the wolf off. Now, if there comes a point where they actually throw down, the wolf is hungry enough to still try to go for the, the sheep, even though uh, we've got a deer hound nearby, Orestes will kill a wolf. But uh, a lot of them might be able to overwhelm. Uh, currently, as you can see, they're kind of camping on the, uh, the rabbit warrens. They're waiting for some food. They're probably very, very hungry. We've got another two, 22 clan reputation there. Honestly, getting up a uh, an early inn and having just anywhere to to put up some uh, some clan members is a very very good way of rapidly rising your clan reputation. Uh, there we go. We've got our first trader of winter. They have brought some flax sheaf, some oat sheaf, and some straw. I will straight away buy the straw. Hmm. Could buy a tomcat. Hmm. We could have kittens. Now this, uh, they're a reasonable age as well. They've got quite quite a bit of time for them. Um, I will buy the oat sheaf. I will buy the flag sheaf. And I, yeah, sure. Okay, we'll take the tomcat too. I can sell a couple of tiles and bricks. And I will just uh, recover a little bit of the money that we spent. We're going to get six reputation from this. Uh, sure, we'll sell all of that. There we go. Well, that's fantastic. But we are going to now need a new cat bed. Uh, where would the cat bed be? There we go. We can place the cat bed right down there, in the spot that one of our, uh, one of the drying racks, mushroom drying racks, went from. All right. Unfortunately, we're going to need some fresh meat in order to get uh, to fill the food bowl for our animals. Have we got any fresh meat? No, we have converted it all 
into cooked meat. That is quite the shame. All right, then it means that we're probably going to have to go out and take care of one of the wolves ourselves. Either that or a fox. Unless one of the cats can bring in a rabbit, which they might well do. Uh, there's plenty of rabbits over there. Where are the foxes, though? Where are the, where are the wolves? I'd rather take out a wolf than a fox, if I can be honest. Simply because there's going to be more meat. Um, doesn't look like there are any around right now, though. It'll probably be a little bit easier for me to see, though, if I uh, unpause the game so I can see them moving. Uh, oh, there, there we go. There is a wolf. All right. Let's get out there. Also, Orestes, I'm going to set you up to help hunters. You're currently guarding our ram from the wolves. Uh, they are actually approaching a little bit too close. Oh, there we go. As you can see, Orestes keeping them far from the uh, the livestock, guarding them wherever they go. Oh, did you just monch on... Oh, you scallywag. That was mine. Oh, well. Uh, we could also butcher one of the lambs, I suppose, and that might not be a terrible idea. This ram is just turned adult. In that case, yes, let's butcher that ram. It's an unnamed ram, and on that note, we need a name for our new cat. Everyone say hello to Jitterbug, <laughs> the Tomcat. Uh, we have already got your bed for you, Jitterbug, so you can uh, stay nice and safe indoors. Rasty's keeping these wolves back. Oh, that wolf is going for it. That wolf got hungry enough. Uh, well, in that case, maybe we don't need to butcher you. Uh, it might still be worth it, but let's have a look. How much hay have we got? I think we've got enough hay that we'll be able to get through the, the whole of winter without worry there. Where did the other wolves head off to? Did they scarper? They may have. They don't tend to hang around once they start dying. Rather sensibly, if you ask me. How much meat did we get from that? Not that much. Though part of that is coming from the fact that we're trying to maintain a supply of cooked meat as well. But there we go. We've got uh, our pet food in there so our cats and our dog can eat indoors. Uh, I wouldn't mind taking out another wolf, though, if we do get the chance. Selling a, a male ram would offer us a, a decent amount of money, but it depends on when we would get a chance. Let's actually check out the clans. What would they buy? You would buy goats. Uh, Boyd. Macintosh would not buy sheep. Okay, so it's Anderson would buy the ram okay it depends on when we're gonna see one of your trade we've got a 36 percent chance sure okay well we'll hang tight for that i would prefer to to wait on selling the ram rather than uh, butchering it just yet but uh it might not be the worst idea ultimately i if we had less hay i would go for it but we're on the seventh of winter we're almost through winter and surprisingly we haven't really struggled uh, at least as far as I'm concerned. So I'm, I'm, re I'm quite happy with that, actually. Uh, I've got three more large rocks down there. Probably want to start getting those set up again. Are we working on more sacks, apparently? How many sacks have we got? Oh, we're trying to get up to ten sacks. Oh, that kind of makes sense. Sacks are used for an enormous amount of things. So most of the things that sacks get used for, we haven't actually gotten to yet. But uh, still, they're quite useful, ultimately. Um, do, do we actually use... Uh, there's nothing in tailoring that makes use of sex, I don't think. Unlike in Dwarf Fortress, where, like, thread and the like had to be contained within sacks and pouches. I, I don't think we actually need to store anything like that in a sack. It's mostly used for things like, uh, like dung, manure, that sort of stuff gets stored in sacks. Uh, you can see how much of a slog, though, it is to get anything done in winter. We've got so few jobs, and so few are getting done each day. Uh, we've got a couple of hauling jobs. Obviously, those keep getting um, getting created. But by and large, just moving around outside is such a chore for our clan folk that getting all of this set up is going to take some time. Uh, we want to get some jobbers as quickly as we possibly can come spring. Now, ideally, we'll get the last remaining jugs in here. 
And usually I would do something a little bit different in order to preserve the the cooling. I would, to prevent my clan folk using up the ice jugs throughout the rest of the year, uh, normally I would create a, a little ice room with a vent connecting it. Oh, we got two traders today. Uh, and then seal the door. So lock the door so they can't get through there and just keep that as a permanent fixture just to keep the room forever cold. Do we have... sadly not. Okay, well that isn't the worst thing. I could just sell a load of gravel to make a bunch of money if I really want to. I could also buy a bunch of raw eels. That isn't a bad call. Um, a sow... In terms of the animals, sheep produce wool, cows... Uh, sorry, goats produce milk, as do the cows. Uh, pigs, it's literally just meat. And chickens can produce eggs. Obviously, everything can produce meat, but uh, the only thing a pig will do is produce meat for you. Uh, we will go ahead and I will sell a bunch of these. And with that, I will buy all of your eggs and your eels. We've now got cooked eggs. And sure enough, go ahead and just make 10 of them. Keep 10 cooked eggs available. Can we store cooked eggs over here? We can store eggs over there. We can't. That's, we don't necessarily store cooked eggs there, but we'll see what we can do. Let's get our, that all done. I'm not going to do any more trading there. You can go ahead and leave. Thank you very much indeed. We're up to a thousand coins. I am just going to straight up buy these berries. Thank you very much, and then you can head on off. That's good enough for me for now. There we are getting the last little bit of uh, clay in. In fact, the uh, temperature outside is quite balmy. It's only minus four degrees. That's marvellous. All right, Amira still working on storage, which I'm completely okay with, if I'm perfectly honest. I want to keep things nice and tidy. It keeps... Uh, right now, we don't have a lot of efficiency between our buildings, but that will uh, come with time. Now, where do we store... Oh, we store the cooked eggs on the meat rack. <laughs> All right. We store the raw eggs in the, uh, veg in the serving basket, but we store the cooked eggs on the meat rack. Don't ask me why. I don't know. Either way, though, I accept. But at this temperature, we're getting close to the point where the water will start to thaw. And that is going to be a big, big help for us. We're up to three ideas. <laughs> now, I have mentioned that I wanted to get the, the peat stove. But this was largely for heating up through winter. Ultimately, I think the bloomery is the more important one for us to go for. So that we can start dealing with iron. If we can start the, the next... Uh, we can start the next year, spring year two, by beginning to work uh, towards metallurgy. I think that would be a big, big step forward for the clan. Uh, we'll still need to unlock the ability to get uh, jobbers, and that's something that I should probably have prioritized, if I'm perfectly honest. It's a very, very useful thing to have those extra set of hands. But having some actual metal tools will be an enormous step up for us. Absolutely huge. Uh, you know what? We could move something down here. Because I think the bloomery casts sparks, unfortunately. Hmm. Let's shimmy things around a little bit. Where could I put a bloomery that is not going to cause me problems? I mean, I could put the bloomery in here. But, you know, just so that they have this lovely smell of metal working all the way through the night. Alternatively, I could put it in this room. Since time off will trigger before any kind of, uh, uh, anyone is going to bed. So if we did set up the bloomery in here, then there shouldn't be anyone going to the bloomery to do any work when Amira is trying to sleep. Uh, that might be worthwhile doing. I don't know if it changes something from a bedroom if you do that, but uh, it'll be worth us having a look into at the very least. There we go. We're replacing some of the tools because we were actually getting a little bit low on a few of them. And uh, gradually, little by little, replacing, uh, little bit by little bit, sorry, replacing the clothing as well. I don't believe clothing wears down, though I could be wrong about that. Let's have a look at what we've got. We are almost up to all of the clothing that we need. So at this stage, I would expect to see that everyone is fully clothed. Only Kyra is fully clothed. Amira still needs the sackcloth shirt. And Bentham needs the sackcloth pants. But other than that, we have people with more or less everything they're going to need. That is actually a really, really nice place to be. 
Uh, especially because they'll be soon stripping off the fur clothing because it'll be a little bit too hot for them. So they'll only have the sackcloth on at that point. So making sure that we've got enough for, for all of them is uh, is quite important. It is evening on day eight of winter and things are progressing relatively well. I can hear the the baying of wolves outside though, which is a little bit of a worry considering all of our livestock still have to wander all the way down here to the water. Perhaps come next winter, we will have relocated the barn. It won't be a part of the main settlement because we will have a better heat uh, solution. Maybe even we will have dedicated guest quarters and uh, affixed next to the barn. So the guest quarters will have their own heating in there and then that will be shared with the barn. Perhaps even the peat stove, which is significantly more efficient. And uh, we would then be able to uh, perhaps just wall off with a little stone fence or something like that, this water source, and the barn will have easy access to it. They can go out to eat uh, grasses in the spring, summer, and autumn when wolves aren't really a problem because they're really only a concern at winter that I've seen. But come winter, they will spend most of their time indoors just eating the hay that we've accrued, and uh, as a consequence, they'll only need to nip out to have a little bit of water. Uh, I wouldn't mind taking you out if you're going to keep pestering the livestock. Orestes is a little bit jittery because of this. Yeah, Orestes is quite jittery because of this. I'm afraid we're going to have to munch you then. Let's slow things down. Orestes, where are you? Orestes might actually take them out. Yep, Orestes may well kill them as is. Orestes is not going to let them go. The livestock are, are quite perturbed by the proximity of the wolves. Well, that's one bit of food for us, and Orestes going in for the other kill. Well done, Orestes. You are best, Hunter. Fast, fast, silent. There we go. All right, two wolves. That is going to top up our meat supplies quite nicely. Not that wolf meat is necessarily the best meat. <laughs> Typically, predator meat isn't. Not for humans, anyway. But still, beggars can't be choosers when it comes to winter. Okay... On morning nine of winter, almost winter is, is almost over at this point. Uh, also, uh, considering this little area out here is actually a decent spot. I'm going to expand that out a little bit. That can be our corpse pile from now on. And uh, if nothing else, that stops the corpses having to be accrued outside the door of Bentham and Kyra. Uh, but we can now get the bloomery and it's marking this as a critical idea. Let's go ahead and pick that one up. There we go. Now let's have a look at how the bloomery works. Uh, it does throw sparks, unfortunately. It does output heat, but only to 48 tiles. So it's not it's not a solution for heating uh, your house, but having it indoors uh, will help out to a, a little bit. Uh, we could pop, pop it down here and it'll be completely safe. So if we pop that there, in fact, we could even move the kiln in here if I really wanted to. Uh, no, I, I don't particularly want to do that. But this being right there, we are going to need to pop down the flammable blocker. There we are. And we are now going to want to start using these peat shovels that we've got. That being said, we do actually have easy access to, to iron in the mountain. That is, generally speaking, until we need the peat for other reasons, it would be good to go for the iron over there. Uh, we will cancel these jobs as a consequence. Don't need do those over there. We've got plenty of meat coming in. That is fantastic. Rastis has kept us going with meat all the way through winter. We, I would not be surprised if at the end of winter, we end up with more food than we started with. Thanks in no small part to Rastis. Now the Bloomery will use uh, iron ore and uh, charcoal to create ingots there's the wolf there how much meat are we oh we got a lot of meat okay we're we're doing quite well uh we still need to get a couple more uh jugs of water set up we've got a trader i believe oh look at that it is currently the outside temperature is 0 0.1 degrees and it is raining though it's probably on the on on the edge it, it, it's raining slush at that kind of temperature Especially because because of the wind chill as well. Yeah, you know, the, the, I think the triple point of water is like 0 0.2 degrees Celsius. I could be mistaken. It's been a very long time. Uh, okay, here we are. We can sell 
our RAM. And for that reason, we are going to sell the older of the RAMs. There we go. Let's uh, be rid of you. I am tempted to buy the Heather. Uh, I will buy the Iron Ore. Uh, absolutely, in fact. Uh, we've we've got a decent amount of branches left at the, at the moment. We could sell our precious fur, but we're not going to. Uh, I could go ahead and buy the Heather, sure. Let's get uh, a bunch of Heather as well. Thank you very much for that, and you can be on your way. Thank you ever so much for dropping by. It would be great if you could bring that Heather in, though. was a matter of some high priority. Uh, either that or I could just break it down into branches right now, but it's 25 to 19. Uh, would someone like to bring that in, maybe? Maybe not. How about I force the issue a little bit? There we go. Let's get all of that in, please. Thank you. And then I'll pop those uh, priorities back down again. There we are. Let's get everything in those. Right, we've now unlocked iron ingots. We're actually starting to make progress again. Uh, so the iron ingots, those are going to be necessary for a lot of stuff. I want to get a stone fireplace simply because it is better than the cook stove. I am sorely tempted to get uh, the standing torch and the uh, iron wall torch. However, I'm going to resist those for now. The primary concern for us is going to be the timbery so that we can start getting planks. And from planks, we can make... Uh, actually, we don't... You know, we do need one plank for the smithy. Uh, we'll also be able to start making the uh, containers for a couple of things. Mulch path is a very nice one to get to, which will also be something we'll start producing from the timbery. But getting to the smithy is going to allow us to make metal tools, and then on from that, we'll be able to make all kinds of, uh, of items, uh, including the bath, which people are going to be very, very happy for. Right, I would like you to pretty much make as much of this as we've got. This should never really be a time when I'm not making uh, ingots. So let's just go ahead and say, you know what, make 100. If you have less than 100, try and make more. And I'll probably increase that uh, as the time comes. Uh, we'll see how much uh, an ingot bin can hold. The, the way I usually do things like this is I'll f figure out how much the storage receptacle I'm going to build next to whatever can store in one go and then I will aim to keep that full. I try to avoid overfilling it and then having just random bits lying around in my general storage but you can't always avoid it unfortunately. Oh now this is uh, a pleasant sight. It is now warm enough outside that our livestock are happy to just lie on the uh, still frosty ground and just relax. Fair enough. Uh, we are slowly gathering more iron ore over here, which is perfect. I believe we will unlock the iron ore bin. Uh, let's have a look. Where will that unlock? There we are. The ore pile. We need to have gathered 250 in total for that one. Uh, getting the compost pit might be worth our time. Because we are actually just not uh, gathering any of the gong at the moment. And... That is actually a trade resource. Uh, you can sell fertilizer. Let's have a look if anyone here in particular would buy it from us. Maybe not for now. Okay, well, in, in that case, not something that we need to prioritize for the time being, but we'll see. I don't think they actually list things that you aren't aware of. So until we've made some fertilizer and our clan folk actually have a concept of fertilizer, that's not going to show up as a, a tradable resource, but hopefully we will be getting to it uh, eventually. There's 40 iron ore there, 10 over here, so that's uh, not bad at all. We should be able to get a decent amount going in the bloomery. Uh, hopefully that isn't going to disrupt Amira's sleeping, but we'll have to see tonight uh, whether that's the case or not. We do have one more uh, jug to make. Uh, Christine. Uh, sorry, uh, Christine uh, from Anderson. Fantastic. We actually want to build up our, uh, our relationship with Anderson a little bit more. There we are. As they are the ones that trade in the livestock that we're currently ranching. If nothing else, then we're going to be ending winter with a larger herd of sheep than we had to begin with. I'm very hopeful that the newest pregnancy will be another ewe. Uh, if that's the case, then we can continue growing the flock, but we might struggle a little bit. We'll have to see how that one goes. Uh, we do have five ironing gods, though. That means that should I wish to 
we could start unlocking things that require iron in order to use. I need to get a little bit more thistle before we will automatically unlock the herbrack, and that'll actually be a, a nice one to get as well, because that, uh, well, while it speaks of medicine, I've not actually seen any need for anything like that in terms of medicine yet. But a herbrack is very pretty, if nothing else, and will uh, rise the mood of your clan folk if they're in its vicinity. Now, how happy are you? Clan reputation only 10 at the moment. That's a bit of a shame. I was hoping for that to be a bit better, but we've still got a little bit of time left. We've got 32 uh, rent due as well. We are actually, for three people, a relatively prosperous clan. We've got a decent amount of money, and money is going up all the time. We've gone through a, a fair chunk of our food, sadly, but uh, it is... Uh, we've still got a decent amount. 27 days when we've got a, a visitor here, but 36 when it's just the three of us. Yeah, we'll get 13 clan reputation. That's not too bad, I suppose. Right, it is the last day of winter. It's morning on the last day. Day 10 of winter. How much food have we got? We've got a decent amount there. All right then, Paul, let's see what you've got. You've got a bunch of pea bricks. Not interested in buying that at the moment, but I will take the berries. Thank you very much. It does seem that whilst they're young, if you can train them on a lot of jobs because they've got kid brain and they learn so much faster, you can end up with a very, very useful adult. <laughs> But uh, unlike Rimworld, there doesn't seem to be a downside to that. Like they, they with Rimworld's uh, child system, it still feels weird talking about the the child system in Rimworld. I really didn't ever think they were going to add that in. But uh, giving children free time increases the the kinds of traits and passions that they might develop. Um, whereas, you know, having them working on stuff, well, you know, that just gives you an extra set of hands. But in this game, it does exactly the opposite. Having them work when they're young teaches them faster. Right, how is the water there? It's going okay. Uh, peeps are enjoying some berries. We've got a good, healthy supply of food here. I imagine that we are going to be creating a lot of uh, cooked eel over time. Right, there we go, getting some large rocks. Marvellous. Let's get these set up then. We are very close to having this whole room uh, tiled. And that is going to be a reasonably big uh, achievement for us. Uh, let's have a look at this room at this point. The room's environment is... Uh, it's not great. It's 25. The room itself... As far as it, uh, it's a pleasant room to be in, whereas no other room in the entire colony is pleasant to be in. But this one does technically have more going for it than not. Uh, even when someone is making making uh, uh, dirt by doing any kind of tr uh, craft in it. But the fact that it, is, it has got a positive on the room is going to be nice. We need to get that really, really nice and high, and that would uh, further enhance the earning capabilities of our guests. We're going to need... Ooh, are we out of branches? We made it almost all of the way through winter. Almost all of the way through winter without needing to gather more branches. Right, well, that is a bit of a problem that I didn't notice until now, because now is very late. But okay. Uh, how many branches are on these fires? We've got six there, we've got nine... Okay, we're okay for the branches for the time being. We are going to be uh, all right for those. Though I am going to need a bunch of extra clay in order to gather, uh, or order to put down those floors. Let's uh, set that up again. It'll be wonderful when we actually have the means to just have a clay pit, and then we can keep a, a stock of clay at all times. But for now, we're a little ways off from that. Uh, 5 of 10 there, 7 of 10 there, it should be fine. You will have been disturbed slightly, but it's okay. Uh, let's have a look. Private room, well fed, huge room. Uh, the environment down here. The room has got 30. Huge room, plus 500. So this uh, maxes out just how high the environment score can go. And then that, in turn, will, will be factored into things like mood. Uh, let's have a look. Like, yeah, environment there. Two, well, okay, it was 265 for a moment, but this pulls mood up and down. If your mood gets high enough, then that gives another big bonus to satisfaction. Uh, so it is very, very much worth it to have. 
We're up to 20 ingots now, which I'm reasonably happy with. If we have a look at the ingot bin, uh, that will require only 50. But again, we're going to need planks for that one. Timbery is close. Uh, well, I say close, not really, uh, unfortunately. Though now people can start washing themselves, I strongly imagine that they're going to start having better moods. No longer are they going to have their mood uh, torpedoed by being filthy. Though having the uh, sackcloth and fur clothing isn't making them happy. Eventually you can get to a point where you've got some really nice clothing, um, like linen and the likes, and that will actively improve their mood. Uh, I believe it improves their mood, or perhaps it just doesn't have a mood malice. Either way, it's definitely something to aim for. Right, at this point, we have made it. We are in year two, everyone. The morning of the first of spring. And with that, I'm afraid we're going to have to wrap up today's episode. I really do hope you've enjoyed, though. We made it all the way through winter. We didn't even have to butcher any of our livestock in order to make their food last. And now that we are in spring, they can get their food by just going outside and grazing. So uh, we made it all the way through. Obviously, by next winter, I want to be significantly more advanced. I would like it if we could have a dedicated barn and grass quarters down here and have this watering hole completely sealed off from any predators so our livestock can uh, go outside and get get a drink easily without having to be exposed to much danger though I, we don't strictly need to wall it off for that as long as the trip is nice and quick that should be good enough but that is going to be it from me so thank you again for joining me i hope you enjoyed and i look forward to any feedback you have down below and do remember if you enjoyed what you saw and you want to see more do consider leaving a like and or subbing to get notifications but until next time do take care everyone